Justine, New Mexico is one of the states that has sued opioid makers. Oklahoma just scored more than a quarter of a billion dollars in a settlement. Are we likely to have a, a similar sell settlement here? And if we do, how do we target that money if that actually that amount of money comes in? But first things first, do you think, do you anticipate us being part of this windfall coming from opioid man manufacturers? Yeah, potentially. I, okay. mean, I think it's likely. Um, uh -huh. I guess I, I feel like, and you didn't ask me this specifically, sure. but I feel like the great irony is much of the opioid crisis is a creation of the war on drugs. And this is all, it's a, it's a government created crisis. Right. I mean, I, I believe in decriminalization and, mm -hmm. um, and I, I think we've gotten ourselves to this place and it's a complicated problem. Yep. But this mm -hmm. attack on the supply side is a, is a weird way to get at it. Mm -hmm. uh, now, secondly, we start looking at what, what happened in recent weeks um, and, and whether medical marijuana will be available for opioid users. Even more ironic, mm -hmm. but now we want to use a heavily regulated um, industry, uh, you know, and we want to provide medical marijuana to opioid users who are, who are in the spot because green eye shade bureaucrats have decided this is how we're going to control people's behavior and gotcha. demand. And so I, I just think we're, we're making it increasingly complicated. It's a really serious problem here. Yep. Of course, it's mm -hmm. so. So I'm, I'm more interested in what we, we can do um, to help people here, help sure. the economy. Sure. I mean, that, that's a huge driver mm -hmm. than going after opioid manufacturers. So if we get a windfall, I'd like to see that go into real economic development here. I think, uh, you know, a lot of the problems that we see come from people not having jobs, not having resources, not having hope, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. among other things. And so, you know, money should should be used wisely that way, right. not That's the right. way we've used tobacco settlement money just yeah. for you whatever. Anticipated my point there. We've had some interesting, Harry, some interesting yeah. settlements that have, the money's not gone where we thought it was yeah, going e to go. Exactly. So, you know, but this seems pretty clear. Mm. If you've got a, a, a bunch of money and it's about opioids, shouldn't all of that go to opioid, right. you know, abatement or programs or something, you know, mm -hmm. and not have it Real go treatment. anywhere else? Uh, Real treatment, Real exactly treatment. Right. Well, a couple yeah. of things. Uh, the lawsuit that's uh, being filed here is much broader than Oklahoma, so it's taking in, like, Walgreens and the uh, distributors, right. and that seems to me to be a little bit dodgier of a uh, cause of action. If somebody's bringing in a uh, prescription, they're not, like, Purdue uh, Pharmaceuticals. Right. They're not, you know, right. uh, pushing uh, this. Uh, I think what's interesting about this uh, case is picking up on uh, Justine's point is we tend to focus a lot on supply side issues, but there's been some really interesting research that's been done on why life expectancy is falling in many communities in the United States, uh, and it's the idea of diseases of despair. So there's been a lot of work done by economists asking the question, why are suicide rates uh, going up and why is opioid abuse uh, going up? And it's because these are communities that are really experiencing tremendous deficits. They don't have work. They don't have educational uh, opportunities. And so while it does, there is an intuitive logic to use this for opioid uh, you know, remediation and getting people into treatment, and I would be fully supportive of that, I think we've also got to look at the reasons for why it is that people uh, become addicted in That's the first right. place. Right. So here's where we've got to look at both the supply side and the demand side. All right, good points there. I'm both your points, good st stuff on that side of the table. Uh, Giovanna, the, the idea that people are suffering here. Mm -hmm. Opioid addiction is a, su you know, it's terrible. You know, we've all seen plenty of documentaries. We're gonna air this on Monday night. It's just, there's plenty of evidence out there. What took so long for us to get here? It, w it was an argument in New Mexico for a bit of time, wasn't it? Oh, well, I think yeah. it's been political. Yeah. Right? We, you know, yeah. the, the last administration didn't uh, didn't want to act on that. Right. So, I mean, politics plays a big role in it. But, mm -hmm. you know, looking broadly at this, this this has really only been an issue mm -hmm. for a couple of decades. Mm -hmm. And so it, this, you know, so this is relatively new. And so it, it's not just like, oh, yeah, let, let's, you know, treat this like any other really big problem that sure. we have. I think this this requires a little bit more energy and like response responsiveness, seeing as though it's such a new issue and it, and it really we could right. do some you know we could actually help people if we get in there quickly enough. Mm -hmm. And I think the you know the addiction issue is obviously huge. Mm -hmm. um, pain control alternatives mm -hmm. is you know that that has to be where we mm -hmm. um, where we focus as well. And mm -hmm. so. Supporting um, alternatives to pain control uh, mm -hmm. is important. And also, I just have to say, Please. women are disproportionately impacted by the disorder um, or the use disorder. And mm -hmm. 
so we have to look at why that is um, and why the increase has, it, there's been such a bigger increase, you know, for women than men. Mm -hmm. Why do you uh, think, in your pr opinion, why do you think that is? Well, what, we what know, accounts that so I mean, a lot of the research, research shows that uh, women experience more chronic pain. Uh, and so like one of the surgeries that um, leads to the most dependence on opioids is hysterectomy. Oh, no. mm. So there are some uh. real sex-based issues mm. here, um, sex and gender-based issues uh, that, that need to be looked at. And also um, there are some sex and gender differences in how people respond to treatment. So it's not just like one size fits all treatment. We right. really have to look at what works for women right. and what works for men. Good point there, yeah. yeah I know, I, I saw you listening intently, Tom, the same here, that I had no, no idea of that, mm -hmm. uh, especially for hysterectomies. That's, that's amazing mm -hmm. to me that mm -hmm. that could be the starting point to a, an opioid addiction. Has money always just been the problem here, Tom, or is it something else that's missing? I that's wish it was would have been just money as right. the issue. I think there's right. some inherent process issues here as well. Right. Um, yeah, because we're looking at a couple of different issues here. One, one is, you know, uh, uh, medical, uh, medical marijuana, cannabis. Uh, the other is how to address the opioid issue. The other that is, uh, is how do you address addictions and addictive, uh, yes. you know, addictive behavior. Right. Uh, and, you know, that's through behavioral health services. And, you know, mm -hmm. Bernalillo County has mm -hmm. been you know, saying that they're leading the way. We're still waiting to kind of see what that really looks like. Right. Uh, the state is still putting itself back together from, uh, you know, the disaster during the Martinez administration. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of different issues that need to mm -hmm. be addressed. Whether, you know, the medical cannabis uh, advisory task force uh, approving cannabis or marijuana to be on that, or uh, opioids rather, to be on the list to receive, uh, you know, cannabis. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if that's going to work, but you know what? It seems it's therapeutic, given that the governor has come out saying that this next 30-day session they're going to be addressing medical marijuana, mm -hmm. marijuana recreational marijuana. Uh, so it's it's going to be an issue that's going to be addressed. So I think what we're seeing is is the precursor of things to come. Gotcha. And Harry, on that point, you know, the Dar Department of Health is signaling they're going to approve yep. that they might like mm -hmm. this, and that comes from an administrative change yeah. in you know, just a whole new set of thinking, a whole new attitude, basically. Exactly, when you have a change in uh, administration in the governor's office, but also a much more democratic uh, House and uh, Senate, right. uh, it's going to have a knock-on effect on the uh, agency. So it's uh, pretty clear that mm -hmm. uh, it, these issues are gonna be uh, viewed uh, very, very differently. Mm -hmm. but I do wanna just uh, go Please. back to Tom's uh, point that mm -hmm. we have to look at these, you know, in a very holistic sort of way. We have to look at them as a public health uh, issues. And right. where I think a lot of addiction is going on, there's not a lot of access, not just to mental health care, but primary eye care. Mm -hmm. There's not a lot of economic uh, development that's uh, going on. So I fear that in just focusing on this you know, one thing, it's an important uh, thing, but it doesn't really get at the roots of addiction that you're addressing. Well, that's we're, we're spending all this money incarcerating people and right. not treating them. Uh, addiction is not a new problem, mm -hmm. um, but I, I think it's an opportunity for us to take back, take a step back and look at how has the government, government's role actually impacted what people do. People, a lot of people take opioids because they can't get other drugs That's because right. they couldn't. Marijuana wasn't legal, right. you know. And and so we are at this point. Maybe we reassess the government's role in making these decisions for people mm -hmm. a as we address addiction more holistically. Fair enough, absolutely. That's all the time we have for this week, but we're always curious about your thoughts. Drop us a line at NewMexicoInFocus.org or find us on YouTube, Facebook, or Twitter.